Today's video is a crazy one with some serious Etsy drama going down. But before we dive into all of that, I want to show you how this store makes over a half a million dollars a year with just 35 products. Let's go. All right, y'all, I am super excited about this particular store review because not only is this an amazingly impressive store, they are a new store, they are already killing it in sales, they are literally getting sales as we speak, as you're watching this video, they are making money and it is super impressive. But on top of that, there's some pretty crazy drama going down with this particular store and their particular products that I really want to dive into and kind of explain to you guys so that you know how to handle this should this occur in your selling experience. Hopefully it won't knock on wood. That being said, let's take a peek at what this store is. This is called Ransack Viking, and they make very beautiful, handcrafted, expertly crafted, as they say, knives and axes and blades. And as we scroll down and look at their actual products, you can see that they are really pretty knives, really beautiful knives. I guess guys wouldn't probably want to describe this as pretty, but they are really beautiful knives and they are perfect gifts for people that like the Lord of the Rings or um, The Witcher or any of those types of fantasy realm type of shows or movies. So very cool fandom based audience here. While we look at their listings and at their store, I do want to point out that they only have 35 listings, and that is an astronomically low number for a store that is making this kind of money and this amount of sales. So just to really break that down for you, we're going to get into their Etsy store stats. As you can see down here, they have almost 15,000 sales. They have 35 listings and they have an average product price point of about $60. And I do think that 60 is pretty conservative. Most of their best sellers, most of the things that are selling well are roughly in the $60 price point. So that's what we went with. And this store opened in 2021. Their first feedback was actually February of 2021. So they are pretty new store. They've already gotten a massive amount of sales to be so new. But when you adjust for the age of their store and their approximate price point of $60, that puts their average annual sales at $548,000 a year. Again, that is a pretty conservative estimate, but that is over a half a million dollars. A half a million dollars, y'all, selling blades, knives, axes, and so forth. That is absolutely amazing. I am so stoked to be doing this review because it is such a great example that you can have a store that's not even two years old and it's already making half a million dollars a year. So I hope you're as impressed by that as I am. And if you want help finding a niche that, or a niche that sells well, that you're actually into selling and that you could enjoy, definitely make sure you check out my free PDF. I have a free resource. It has over 20 successful stores all put together in a case study to kind of give you some ideas of things that you could potentially sell. And I do have other free resources as well. There's a link in the description. So let's take a look at one of their best-selling listings here. This is a 10 inch Damascus knife. Damascus, Damascus, I'm not quite sure how you say that, but this is a really cool knife. This is one of their best-selling listings. And if we take a look at these photos here, we can see they are very heavily, heavily watermarked photos. We're gonna talk about why that is in just a minute. Before that, I wanna look at this video and kinda see, this video looks really well done. It looks professionally made and it looks really clear. You can get a great view of the details, the details on the blade work, the details on the leather case. It just really highlights the beauty of the product and showcases it very, very well. It's also a pretty short video, so you don't have to really lose your attention span. And 
all of their images are very heavily watermarked, almost to the point where it is difficult to see the details on the blades. Let's take a look at their title. So they do have, I love how my computer just wants to highlight everything. So sorry for the big wave of blue, guys. All right, they do have a lot of the word Damascus in their title, so it's very clear that they are going after that as their focal keyword. I'm going to check and see how many characters they're using in my little workbook here. They are using 129 characters so far. They have 140 that they could use, so they're using almost all of them. There's probably room for one more word here. But they are making some silly little uh, mistakes, which tells me that they're probably bulk updating these listings. For example, the spaces and the commas are not in the correct places, and that's probably not going to affect their SEO by any means, but it could affect, you know, how many words they can get in here. And those are really minor issues, but it definitely makes you think of what's the most effective way to use their title. So probably they don't need to have Damas Damascus, that's a mouthful, Damascus in here so many times, they have it once, two, three, four times. But they do, aside from that, have some good uh, variety in the keywords. This is an interesting description because this is where I would normally point out that you need to have an appeal statement or some way to get your SEO in here. But their uh, description starts right off the bat with a massive warning that they are a registered trademark and that they are going to be reporting any copycats to trademark integrity and uh, to Etsy. So it does tell you right here, be careful of copycats and that they are the only brand selling authentic Damascus handmade knives. And then they go further than that to say, when you see our knives listed on other spam shops, please do not buy from them. So this is really problematic for a couple of reasons. It, initially, it tells you that they are being duplicated, that their store is being duplicated, and that there are copycats on Etsy. And that is a very real problem with selling something popular on Etsy is your idea will only remain your idea for a little while. There are going to be people who come along and um, want a piece of the pie, so to speak. So they are going to try to open a store with that same type of product, that same type of niche. That being said, they should never be completely duplicating your store or completely duplicating your products. They should always be original. They should always have their own style, their own twist on things, um, and things that make them unique and set them apart. So before diving too much further into this particular listing, I want to talk a little bit about this particular um, situation where they are experiencing what looks like uh, copycats, direct copycats. So the first thing I did when I tried to figure out why this message is so prevalent on here and what could potentially be the problem was go to Etsy and search for Damascus Knife. And as we kind of scroll down here and look at these results, I do want to point out that here is the listing we just looked at. It's by Ransack Viking, and we can see that beautiful video there, that well-made video that they just had. And then almost immediately, two spaces over, we see what looks to me like the exact same knife. The handle is the same, the case is the same. These are definitely different uh, main images. They're not the exact same image, but they are definitely the same blade. And if you are unsure if that's exactly the same, I did want to go ahead and open this listing up and take a peek at it. So this seller is Queen, Queen Snake Knives, and they are not as new. They only have 2,700 sales. That's, or they are more new, excuse me. They only have 2,700 sales. So they're not as established as the other store but we can see that it is the exact same knife. So it has that little, um, I don't know if you can really see in the photo here, but it has the little mark here, the little inlet 
inset in the blade here, the blade work looks the same and the snake pattern on the leather blade holder looks the same. It looks very well made, same professional images. It looks like it's the exact same product. So I'm not sure how they're duplicating the exact same product. However, an interesting thing to note is that they're not the only ones with this product. This is another one of those same exact listings and they actually have the same exact video that we see in our listing from Ransack Viking. So going back to Ransack Viking, they have the same video here as what we see here by this store is called Custom Forged Gift and this store only has 91 sales. So this is a very, very, very new store. Now, the interesting thing for me about this particular store is that when I go to their store, let me show you up at the top here. This is Custom Forged Gift. When I scroll all the way down and I look at their about information, they're very new. They started in 2022 and they do have one frequently asked question about the origin of their products. And it does say they ship their orders from the USA, but when they're out of stock, they ship their orders from Pakistan. So that makes me wonder, are these knives originally from Pakistan? And when we look back at these listings and we see that they are the exact same product, I'm gonna make this bigger here. You can see the same little inlay here in the blade, the same or in the handle, the same really pretty, really beautiful little blade work, the same kind of um, details on the sheath. It looks the same to me. It looks exactly the same as this knife here on Ransack Vikings listing, and it looks the same as this knife here on Queen Snake, Queen Snake Knives listing. But one of two things is essentially happening in a situation like this. Either one, they are all sourcing their products from the same place or the same group of places, and they just happen to be selling the same thing, in which case nobody's in the wrong here. And probably Ransack Viking needs to take down that description where he does say that other sellers are um, copying and basically spam shops. He, that should probably come down if that is the case. On the other hand, the other thing that could be happening is that Ransack Viking is handcrafting their own products. They are the original soul maker as they do claim in their description. And all of these other stores are very carefully and meticulously duplicating that product exactly. And they should be shut down by Etsy, but it will all come out in the wash either way. Um, whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen. And you kind of make your own karma as you go through selling on Etsy. So if, if you sell with integrity and you sell with honesty and you are doing the best you can, you really don't have to worry about things like this because if someone does steal your idea, you can report it to Etsy. And in the other side of that situation, if multiple people just happen to be selling the same thing, nothing is going to happen because obviously they're not doing anything wrong. So that's really all I want to say about that issue. Let's jump back to one of their bestseller listings and kind of dig into that. And this might be one of their newer listings. It might be one of their older listings, but there's some things I wanted to point out on this particular listing. So they do have the same very nice quality of images here, very well done images. And if we take a look at their title, it looks like they are really focusing on the word ax here, but they do have some good variety. They also have hatchet. Hatchet is another word for ax. And then they have more of the long-term keywords here. So they have Viking hatchet, Viking bearded axe, battle axe, hand forged axe. I do want to point out that this is incorrect. It should be hand forged axe with a D. So they either, they might have ran out of space or they just misspelled it. Let's see if they actually run out of space here in my workbook. Okay, so 131 characters. They still have some room here. So really they just misspelled it. Um, the word ax here is not capitalized. So these are really minor things, but they do affect. And again, we see 
common spacing issues here. What this means, what why this matters is because it does affect the readability a little bit here. So from an SEO point of view, it's not going to really affect you that much. But if I was a reader reading this, probably I might choose, for example, if we're looking at that search page where there's multiple sellers, I'm probably going to click on the one that is spelled correctly because it's going to be easier for my eyes to interpret that product and to see that. So that could potentially be an issue that they want to address when they go update these listings. That being said, let's take a look at their description. They have the same kind of problem here. Right off the bat, they're talking about copycats and that they are the only authentic seller. And then here, without really any spacing, they go down to the title of their product. And this looks like it was probably an original title of their product. It has a lot of different words here, like um, Viking bearded axe, Scandinavian style asks, gift for father, gift for boyfriend. So that tells me that they've updated this product and it kind of supports my theory that they did so with some sort of automatic updater like Vila probably. So looking at their keywords here, we do see some of that same variety. They've got Ransack Viking, which is their store name, axes and hatchets, hatchet, Viking small hatchet, hand forged axe, here they got the D here, forged axe again, Celtic hatchet, that's a great word. Celtic could have been a word that fits up here in that extra 10 spaces that could have really made a difference in their SEO. And then let's see if they have any tags down below because Etsy likes to split them up nowadays. Looking at these ones, some of these we see the same. They've got hand forged without the D again. So maybe that was intentional to misspell it. It could be a popular search term. Viking Axe, Handmade, Scandinavian Axe, Battle Axe, etc. So their SEO is pretty well thought out. They did put some planning and effort into it. I think it's just these little details like the spacing and readability and of course their description that really needs to be updated. They do have this product on sale and it does look like they have timed their sale. So this particular sale ends in 18 hours and there are ways to set up your sale so that you are constantly running a sale while still capitalizing on that timeliness. So it does help add some of that pressure for the buyer to get it now while it's discounted. And as you can see, they've originally priced this at over $200. So it's 70% off, which looks like a pretty substantial discount and adds even more to that pressure of, oh, I need this and I need this right now. So I'm going to jump back to their home page here and show you that of their 35 listings, all 35 listings are on sale. So they are using very intentional pricing and taking advantage of that um, sales and discounts. So really, this is a well done store. They have done a really great job. If we look at one last listing here, this is another bestseller. They've done a really, really great job with this listing, with all of these listings. Um, this one, they do have Lord of the R star 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 because they're not going to say Lord of the Rings. That's copyrighted, but they have very clearly implied that this is a replica sword from the movie of Lord of the Rings. So going back to that fandom um, appeal and it overall just looks really well done and really beautiful. So we can easily see why this store is selling half a million dollars a year's worth of sales. They are doing what they love. They are absolutely raking in the money at the same time. And they are growing really, really quickly despite only having 35 products. So there is a lot of um, opportunity for growth. Even if you don't have very many items, you just really want to put your time and effort behind choosing the right product to sell and find a product that people actually want to buy and that will sell well on Etsy. I do also have a free resource for that to help walk you through finding a winning product. So be sure to check that link and get those resources. They're free. They're there to help you. So take them, please. Anyways, 
this is such an impressive, impressive store. I don't know what their goals are, what they're hoping to grow to, but I would imagine they probably didn't anticipate selling so well so quickly. So this was just such a great example. And it's also an example of with the whole drama that went down with the copyright thing. Be careful what you say. Probably it's not very good karma to say, hey, we're the only original seller if you are in fact sourcing your products from someplace else and you are not the one actually hand making them. And on the flip side of that, if Ransack Viking is hand making their own products and other people are directly copying that, that's horrible karma on their end. So like it's gonna all come out in the wash and one way or another, either these sellers are getting it all from the same place and they're all going to thrive together and probably the ones with better SEO will supersede the others or the ones that are copying are gonna go down flaming because they're going to get hit with copyright notices and copyright issues. That being said, if you know you're selling something and you know you're not doing anything wrong, don't be afraid to fight for your store, guys. If I was one of these other sellers selling a Damascus knife and I got hit like, hey, you're copying me and I knew I wasn't, it's okay to fight back and it's okay to protect as long as you know that you're doing the right thing. In the end, whatever we're selling on Etsy, we have to do the right thing and we have to have integrity or our store is really not going to last very long. Now that I have done what feels more like a lecture than a review, I want to give you something really, really cool to check out. In fact, there is an amazing custom jewelry store that pulls in $6 million a year. I give some great tips and show how they are just totally setting themselves apart from the competition in this video.